Hello, my friends. My New Year's resolution is to get back into YouTube in a big way and start covering VR more regularly. And to kick things off, I want to showcase my top 10 picks for the best Steam VR games that came out in 2021. You might be surprised by a few of my selections. Let's kick it off with number 10, Mushizzle. This came out at the very beginning of 2021, and it's a hugely underrated gem that I really enjoyed playing, and I think it never got the exposure that it deserved. This is one of those games where you can quickly guess how it's played by watching the footage. One or more marbles drop onto the playfield, and you need to manually place objects and gadgets in the right places so that the marbles collect all the keys and then find their way to the goal. It all plays out in front of you on a magic floating table, and it's freely adjustable so you can play sitting or standing. There's a lot of variety in the gadgets that you'll be placing, from simple ramps, to portals, to gravity switchers, and more. I really loved playing this. The design and polish are exceptionally well done. I find it to be a relaxing and immersive environment to play in. The soundtrack is also really good and enjoyable to listen to. After about three hours of playing, I'm currently totally stumped on a level two-thirds through the campaign. There is a hint system, but even with that, I'm still stuck on this one. Besides the campaign, there's also an NVR level creator with community-made levels available to download as well. For the price of $11, I think it's a fantastic puzzle game with a great value. Number 9, After the Fall, is an intense first-person shooter where you team up with others to clear out zombie-infested cities. Playing either solo with AI bots or multiplayer, a team of four heroes goes through linear levels where zombies appear from all around, with the occasional special obstacle keeping everyone in one place while enemies are cleared. The gameplay is simple, but everything is very well made here. I found the graphics to be excellent, and the soundtrack keeps the action moving along nicely. You'll find special zombies that add variety to your encounters, and the occasional boss battle as well. This post-apocalyptic world has a unique design with everything feeling like a cold winter. Having mad zombies all around you in the snow reminds me of living in Minnesota. For gun handling, you can choose between a realistic mode or a quick reload mode. In between missions, you can customize your weapons using an arcade machine menu and some hand-controlled tools, which I found to be a fun, creative spin on the idea of upgrades. The gameplay can feel a bit repetitive after a while, but I think the presentation is exceptionally well polished and put together. You can move via sliding or teleporting, and it's also the most expensive game on this list at $40. Number 8, Mist. The timeless classical puzzle game has been rebuilt from the ground up to play in VR and flat screen PC. The previous VR title from the makers of Myst was Abduction, which was ported to VR after it was made for flat screen. And it was an admirable attempt at the time, but definitely felt pretty rough. Myst, on the other hand, plays very well in VR. The interactables feel great to play with, and the performance I found to be surprisingly smooth. Abduction in VR brought my PC to its knees, but Myst performs quite smoothly and looks amazing. As you're traveling between different puzzle worlds, it's easy to get distracted and just enjoy the scenery. 
I will, however, mention that I don't think some of the puzzles aged very well. Some of the puzzle solutions felt truly tedious to me. I needed to look up some hints before I could get very far, but then again, maybe that's just because I'm becoming more impatient as I age. It could be said that the puzzle tedium is part of its charm, especially if you're nostalgic for the original. If you already know all the puzzle solutions, you can choose to play with the puzzles randomized, which is a pretty cool feature. I love when old classics come to VR, and Myst has been recreated very well by the original developers. For movement, you can choose between sliding and teleporting. The price is $30. Number 7 is a tie between two similar games, Demio and Table of Tales The Crooked Crown. They are both, at their core, turn-based tabletop strategy games that feature a rich visual presentation. During your turn, you move your pieces along a tiled grid, and you use abilities by grabbing cards from your hand and placing them on the board. In Demio, you also roll the dice with every action to determine how strong your action is. In Table of Tales, you roll dice less frequently. Dice are used for very specific actions within unique levels. And that takes me to the biggest difference between these two. Demio is a randomized dungeon crawler without much of a story, whereas Table of Tales is a scripted narrative journey that is rich in storytelling, with tons of voiceover about your band of scoundrels sailing the high seas for adventure. The substantial treasure on deck was, let's say, acquired by four scoundrels who hired the ship for their venture. Who are they, you ask? Pick them up and see for yourself. Also important to know is that Demio can be played alone or in multiplayer, but Table of Tales is single player only. I beat the campaign in Table of Tales in 5 hours on medium difficulty. There's three difficulty modes to choose from. These are both excellent tabletop games that feel very similar. But between the two, you have an option of multiplayer strategy or a single player story adventure. The hammer doesn't say anything as the diamond disappears over the horizon. Perhaps she can finally close the book on her troubled past. Once they figure out who the mastermind is, I mean. It seems Packer kept her word and handed Patrick Quick to the authorities. Number 6. Vermilion is the best painting simulator I've ever experienced. All of the mechanics and techniques feel incredibly authentic. The paint mixing and blending behave very realistically. Depending on the brush you use and the pressure you apply, you can achieve subtle and natural results. Brushing and rendering in here just feels so unbelievably good. For painting in VR, nothing comes even close to it. One feature that I especially appreciate is that you can change your brush holding position to anything you want. While in grip adjustment mode, you can arrange your hand however you want to hold the brush. I think this feature is huge because you never feel like you're fighting with the brush. All VR simulators could use features like this to help holding things feel more natural. And while the actual creating feels rooted in reality, there's also some high-tech tools that are only available in the virtual world. Like an optional floating web browser for you to paint along with any online video. Uh, down here a bit, now you see it's a it's more desaturated color, now we can go like on the shadows right here. All right. And very handy undo features and brush stabilization. If you want to paint in VR, then I'm confident you'll be very happy in here. The price is $20. Number and speaking of simulators, Cooking Simulator VR earns the number five spot in my top 10. In years past, I raved about Thief Simulator VR as a great port from flat screen, and the same developer ported this, and I think they did an outstanding job. 
I've tried other VR cooking games before, and I think some of the biggest challenges for these is to make it realistic enough that you feel like you're learning a real life skill, but while also keeping the gameplay approachable. And Cooking Simulator VR strikes this balance very well. There is a lot to learn here. It can feel a little overwhelming at first, but as I progressed through the training and career, I never felt left behind or lost. To me, this is fun, educational, and challenging all at the same time. And just like with Vermilion, it's head and shoulders above the other similar VR games in the genre. For movement, there's both sliding and teleporting. The price is $25. Eternal Starlight is a space combat strategy game where you command your fleet with hands-on abilities. The main campaign mode features a little bit of story as you play from mission to mission in a variety of combat challenges, while you slowly build up more resources to increase the size of your fleet, and also totally customize each individual ship with weapon loadouts and special abilities. To play the combat missions themselves, you command each of the ships and your fleet in real time, move them like tiny toy ships in space, and also use each of the special powers of each ship that you've customized, like selecting a special weapon and then dragging it with your hand to the enemy to target them. If you zoom in on an enemy ship, you can even target individual systems of that ship to be destroyed first. While conversing with alien races before battle, it kinda reminded me of Star Control 2. And while this game is more an RTS than an RPG, this still gave me some nostalgia for the Star Control series. The campaign play is permadeath, so once you're dead, you're dead for good. But there's also a skirmish mode to experiment and beef up your skills. Eternal Starlight is a beautiful RTS. If you're a strategy fan, then it's a must play. The price is $20, and there's a free demo you can download. System ready. Number three. Eye of the Temple is your Indiana Jones obstacle course dream come true. It's a full room-scale adventure that requires a lot of physical movement from you. You'll continually be stepping on tiles, moving your feet to stay on rolling platforms, avoiding traps, and more. On your main hand is a whip to activate levers and attack enemies. On your other hand is a torch for lighting up pedestals. Those are the abilities that you start with, and you'll find a little bit of Metroidvania in here, as you'll gain new abilities that will unlock new areas for you. The action is well paced, because sometimes it's very physically challenging, and then after an intense part is over, you'll get to enjoy a somewhat zen break where you simply step on tiles again. This game requires a play space of 2 meters by 2 meters, and you really do need all that space to play. I was fortunate enough that my space was just barely big enough. You can see here that I often had to hug the very edge of my play space to make it through sometimes. The visual and audio design are very well polished. There's a good variety of environments, from expansive chasms to claustrophobic caves. The fact that this was all made by a single developer is incredibly impressive. It took me four hours to beat the game, and I didn't find any of the secret areas, so there's more to discover on a second playthrough. Early on in the game, my biggest worry was that the movement system would get old and repetitive, but thankfully, the game found new ways to keep things fresh and interesting, so I stayed engaged the whole time, and I couldn't stop playing until I finished it. The price is $20, and I think it's an amazing value for the money. And there's a free demo sampler you can download as well. Okay. What? Whoa! <laughs> hit the pole. <laughs> he hit the pole. Complete Which accident. Pole? Was it? Sometimes, an exceptional VR game isn't about flashy graphics or elaborate new game styles. 
Walkabout Mini Golf shines at number two because it takes a game that we've all played before, but executes it so elegantly and beautifully to create a highly addictive experience that's an absolute delight to play. Fun in both single player or multiplayer, after you complete courses, there are hidden balls to collect and challenging scavenger hunts that'll have you replaying maps over and over again. This has become my family's new favorite multiplayer game. It's so much fun to play with others in here. I see your ball. Can you see the ball there? There you go. Oh. Oh, oh excellent. Oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. 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 oh! Nice! Wow. For movement, you can both teleport and fly. The price is $15. Oh, almost. Number one in my top 10 is also my pick for most underrated game of the year. In Mask Maker, you find yourself wandering into the beautiful store of a master craftsman of magical masks. And you'll soon discover the workshop itself behind the storefront, and it's there that you'll learn to create your own masks with all the tools in the shop. But of course, these are magical masks, and putting them on will transport you to many fantasy worlds. But in order to progress further in each world, you need to create new masks, because each mask can only explore a certain area of each realm. Another new body to test out. As you see, the power of the mask maker is very useful. When you see a mask that you need, take out your telescope to view the mask, and then you'll get a blueprint for how to create it in the shop. And very often, you'll need to search for new components to create these masks. Twisted roots from the flint bra tree. Poisoners, of course. The workshop itself is really fun to use, and so the masks are also enjoyable to create. Ah, paint was always my favorite part. The younger ones always prefer playing with colors, <laughs> while older crafters find carving more refined. There are three large realms of masks, and with a handy lever you can quickly store and load each of the three sets of masks. With that set open, you can also view a mini-map to get a better sense of where to go, along with a tally of all the components to be found there. Later on in the game, you'll face a lot of puzzles, and eventually, you'll need to switch between multiple mask people to change places and solve very large puzzles. I honestly can't think of a negative thing to say about this game. It's so well put together, and the VR interactions in the workshop are top-notch. I found it incredibly immersive, and I loved exploring all these magical realms. Once I started playing, I couldn't put it down until I finished it, which took me about 5 hours. If you enjoy exploring new magical places, then I think you'll have an amazing time. For movement, there's both sliding and teleporting, with comfort options as well. The price is $20. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!